Well, good evening, friends. My name is Joel Fraser with Kingdom Reformation Movement. I want to welcome you to our weekly broadcast, The Upper Room. And indeed, we are looking forward to an exciting time in the presence of Almighty God. So, Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to share your word from this platform. And Lord, I pray that as your word goes forth today, it will go forth with power, with might, with accuracy. I thank you, Lord, for all that you are going to speak into our hearts, into our lives. And we are careful always to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Well, friends, I trust that you are having a wonderful evening in the presence of Almighty God. And there is a word that the Lord has placed upon my heart. I want to share with you this evening. It is a prophetic word. It is a word that goes contrary to the conditions that you're experiencing. It's a word that is pregnant with the power and the presence of the Lord to bring about transformation in your lives. And I know there are many of you, you've been experiencing what seems to be drought-like conditions for the past few years. And some of you may have suffered the loss of something or someone or a setback in some area. It may have been a loss in income, a loss in a loved one, loss of health, or a loss of something else that is of value to you. But the common theme has been one of loss and pain due to the drought that you have been experiencing. This was the same predicament the people of Israel faced during the time of Elijah. However, in their case, the drought was caused as a direct result of their sin and rebellion. Your drought may not be the result of sin or rebellion, but the effects are the same. Just like the children of Israel, you've been languishing. And their drought lasted for a period of three and a half years began at the beginning of first Kings 17 and I don't know how long your drought has been persisting it may be longer it may not however no matter how long your drought have been going on it always seems that it's going on far too long but I have come here with a word this evening it's a word of good news Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your drought has an expiry date. And this prophetic word that is coming to you today is this. Your season of drought is about to end. Yes, friends. God says, gird up your loins and get ready because your drought is about to end. The Lord is about to rain favor and blessings into your life, into your experience. This was the same word that was released to Elijah. And God told him to go and deliver that word to the people. Let's take a look now at that word as it forms the basis for our text today. We are looking at 1 Kings 18 verse 1. And it says... It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearing. The title for the message is a bold and dynamic prophetic word. Your season of drought is about to end and the first thing that jumps out at us from this text is the fact that the word from God only came to Elijah after many days and I sense God is quickening this same word to us this evening sometimes 
it will take many days before we hear from God. But whether it takes many days or not, whatever God says is a sure word. It will come to pass. And prior to this word from the Lord, both Elijah and the people of Israel were experiencing many days of drought. And this lets us know that it may be many days before your drought comes to an end. In fact, some of you had to endure many days of hardship, many days of pain, many days of stress and anxiety. But God is saying to you today, your pain is coming to an end. Your season of drought and dryness is about to end. And so I ask you the question, who is going to bring your drought to an end? Is it the government? Is it your employer? Is it your doctor? The answer is a resounding no. God is the one that will bring your drought to an end. And what is interesting about this is that God can bring your drought to an end. Although drought-like conditions continue to persist for the masses. This is what he did for Elijah and the widow woman in chapter 17 of 1 Kings. Because of their obedience to the voice of God, there was a miraculous extension of the widow's flour and oil such that it flowed throughout the entire period of the drought. And I want to say to you that God can end your personal drought even in the midst of a national drought. In fact, when God decides to end your drought, nothing in this world can stand in the way. Nothing in this world can stop the rain of God's favor and blessing from coming into your life. No pandemic, no downturn, no nothing can stop the sovereign move of God in your life. Someone needs to know that. And so the first thing I want us to see is this. God is sovereign and he is the one that determines when your drought comes to an end. Not the world, not the government. God is God all by himself. He doesn't need anyone's permission to move in your life. Let's go back to our text and see the word that God released to Elijah to deliver to Ahab. It says in verse 1 of 1 Kings 18, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. Notice who is sending the rain. It is God. He's the one who has ultimate control. And when God says, I'm going to send the rain, you better get an umbrella because the rains are going to come down and overtake you. The second thing I want us to notice is this. The word from God to end your drought comes without fanfare. It comes without any visible change in your status quo. Yet, it is a sure word. When the word of God to end this drought came to Elijah at the beginning of chapter 18, there was no fanfare or fireworks to accompany the word. All it said was the word came to Elijah. In fact, the word came to Elijah while he was still outside the precincts of Israel in the land of Zarephath. You remember that he had gone to the land of Zarephath at the behest of God. God told him that I have provided a widow woman there to sustain you. And through this divine connection between Elijah and the widow woman, God continued his supernatural provision to sustain his prophet. And so while Elijah was still in Zarephath, the word of God came to him. And Zarephath at that point in time, was enemy territory to Israel. So what I want to say to you is that the word of God can find you no matter where you are located. And some of you, you're located in the belly of the drought. You're ready to throw in the towel 
I came here to let you know that God is sending his word to you right now to lead you out of that drought, to lead you out of that place of difficulty. He is a God who is able, he specializes in finding you wherever you are located. There's nothing that could prevent the word of God from reaching you right where you are. So it's important for you to see that when the word of God comes to you, there may not be any visible change in your circumstances. When the word of God located Elijah, there was no immediate change in the circumstances. The drought persisted. You say, why is that? Well, although the word from God is a sure word, there may be some conditions that we have to fulfill in order to bring the word to pass in our lives. You say, what are these conditions? This leads me to the third point that I want to make this evening. And it's this. God wants us to return to him in repentance by dethroning and de displacing anything that rivals our devotion to him. This is why Elijah said to the people in verse 21 of 1 Kings 18, he says, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people answered him not a word. They could not answer because they were convicted in their hearts. You see, the great sin of Israel at that time wasn't the abandonment of God for Baal. No, what they were trying to do was to serve two masters, which is even worse since that is not possible. That's why Jesus himself said, you're only fooling yourselves. If you're trying to serve two masters, because in the long run, you're going to end up loving one and hating the other or vice versa. You cannot serve two masters. And unfortunately, this is what many believers try to do. On the one hand, they have God, but in their back pocket, they have plan B or some scheme that they're relying on. But God is saying to you today, you need to pick a side. It's either me or your scheme, but you can't have both. That's why Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's either you're serving the Lord or you're not serving the Lord. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve two masters. You have to pick a side. You cannot have divided loyalties within your heart and expect to attract the favor and the blessings of God into your life. No, friends. Before the Lord sends the rain of favor and blessing to flood your life, before he ends your drought, he wants you to dethrone anything and everything that rivals his place of supremacy in your life. You say, well, how will I know that God is serious about sending the rain in my life? Well, to convince you of his good intentions and his power to end that drought, he can and does send the fire of his presence. This is what he did for the children of Israel. They were so double-minded, they were so bewitched by Baal that God had to destroy any legitimacy of Baal in their hearts by sending fire to prove that he was the true and only God. And God wants to send the fire of his presence into your hearts to destroy any and every rival to his place of prominence in your life. But before he does that, we have to prepare our hearts to receive. Did you notice what Elijah did in verse 30? Of 1 Kings 18. It says, Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. To prepare our hearts to receive from God, 
we have to repair the altars that have been broken down due to unfaithfulness and false worship. These are the conditions that are necessary for God to send the fire of renewal and revival. We have to repair the altars of prayer, the altar of devotion, the altar of meditating on the word of Almighty God. And then God is going to send the fire of his presence into our hearts, into our lives. But finally, before God ends the drought in your life and sends the rain of blessings, you'll have to contend through persistent prayer. Yes. God is not in the business of providing free lunches, but he is moved by faith and the prayers of the righteous. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. That's why God told Elijah he would send the rain, but only after Elijah contended for it in prayer. So Elijah had to pray earnestly. For the word of God to be manifested. It says in verse 42 of 1 Kings 18. That Elijah went into a fetal position. As a prophetic act to birth what God had already declared through his word. He had to pray seven times before he saw any sign of rain. And we know that seven is the number of completion. So Elijah had to complete his prayer journey with the Lord before the breakthrough of rain was manifested. And I want to say to you that sometimes you'll have to contend for your breakthrough in prayer by rehearsing that same prayer until you realize your breakthrough. Sometimes you'll have to be persistent, contending in prayer this is precisely the reason why many don't get a manifestation of what God has declared in their lives. It's because they fail to contend for it in prayer. We just expect that because God said it, it will be automatic. And sometimes that is how God works. But many times, no, we have to co-labor with God. Many times God expects us to do our part. To bring the blessing and the favor into our lives. And so God is saying that we have to contend in prayer for his word to become flesh. For his word to be manifested into our lives, into our experience. And I have said to you this morning or this afternoon that God is about to end your season of drought. And your response should be. That you ought to take that word and contend for it boldly until you see it manifested in your life. And that is what we are going to do now as we are about to end this message. We are going to contend in prayer for what God said he will do. Because your season of drought is about to end. And this is God's prophetic word being released to you even while you are in the midst of hardship and crisis. And so I'm saying that for this word to be manifested in your life, there are at least four conditions. There are at least four conditions I want to encourage you to satisfy as we contend for this word. Firstly, I want you to contend confront the Ahabs in your life that is those things that oppose the move of God in your life confront the Ahabs in your life secondly repent and dethrone all of the idols in your heart that rivals God's supremacy in your life thirdly repair the altars in your life that have been broken down due to unfaithfulness and false worship Altars of prayer, altars of family devotion, altars of meditating on the word. Repair those altars. And fourthly, contend in prayer for that drought to end. By using this prophetic word to fuel your faith, your authority and your boldness. And I'm saying to you that as you meet these conditions, 
you are going to see a breakthrough in your life. You are going to see the rain of favor and blessing and breakthrough being manifested in and through your life. So, Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for this sobering word that you have released into our hearts, into our lives. And mighty God, we are prepared to confront those Ahabs in our lives. Everything that opposes the move of Almighty God. We are prepared, Lord, to confront every Ahab in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, on behalf of everyone that is watching this broadcast, we repent of all of our sin and our unfaithfulness. We dethrone all of those idols that rivals your supremacy in our lives, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you will give us the grace and the courage to repair those altars that have become broken down in our lives, Lord. Altars of family devotion, altars of meditating and studying the word, altars of prayer, Lord, that have become broken down due to neglect, due to uh, unfaithfulness, mighty God. Help us to repair those altars. And finally, Lord, we are going to contend in prayer for this drought to end, for this dryness to end. Mighty God, we are going to pray until we see a manifestation of your reign of favor and blessing. And so, mighty God, I pray that in the same way that you send the rain in the time of Elijah, I pray that you will send the rain of favor and blessing and breakthroughs into the hearts, into the lives of your people. Mighty God, I pray that the rain of your favor and your blessing will overwhelm every aspect, every area of their lives, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will send the rain into their, Lord, their physical circumstances, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the rain is going to cover them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, whatever the need is, whatever the, the, the cause of concern is, whether there is a need for healing, Lord, I pray that the rain of healing and favor and blessing will mantle your people. Lord, if there's an issue around finances, Lord, if there's a drought of finances, a drought of provision, a drought of income, Mighty God, I pray that the rain of favor and blessings and breakthrough will overwhelm your people even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, if there is a need for restoration, Lord, there, there's, there's only conflicts and there's, there's a, 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 a breaking down of relationship, a drought of relationship, a drought of love and, and, and forgiveness. Mighty God, we release the rain O oh God of healing and restoration, we release the rain, O oh God of forgiveness, the rain of love into their lives, mighty God. And so, Father, whatever is needed by your people today, in the mighty name of Jesus, we release the rain of your favor, the rain of your blessings to overwhelm and to overtake the people of God in the mighty name of of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you are the one that will send the rain. You are the one, Lord, that will release the rain and the favor of blessings in the lives of your people, mighty God. And Father, I thank you that you will give life to this prophetic word in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Well, friends, I trust that you were blessed. I trust that you were encouraged by all that the Lord is speaking, by all that the Lord will do in and through your heart and lives in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. God is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine. He is going to do it, friends. He is going to perform it. And so I want to challenge you to meet those conditions 
Confront the Ahabs in your life. Repent and dethrone all of those idols that rival the presence of God. Rebuild the altars in your life. And finally contend in prayer for this prophetic word to be manifested in your life. I know that as you continue to do these things, God, he's going to honor his word. You're going to see awesome things beginning to happen in and through your life in the wonderful name of Jesus. And so friends, until I see you in our next broadcast, I want to challenge you. Plant your feet on the ground. Look up because your redemption draweth nigh. And of course, always remember that the kingdom of God is at hand. My name is Joel Fraser with Kingdom Reformation Movement. Have a wonderful evening, friends. God bless you.